Hey guys, so I'm still in Singapore and I went online today to Twitter and saw a quote, actually not a quote, a like by a senator from Montana in the USA. And the like had to do with, you know, of course the like feature if you don't already know is this one over here. And if I like something and you're following me, then you will be able to see at some point, presumably somewhere on your page that I've liked this post. And I saw, and I'm following a senator from Montana, and I saw him like a, a quote that talked about teaching the Bible in schools. And it was a very innocuous quote. Um, I thought it was quite clever, actually. Uh, just the idea that why don't we teach some you know, our students about one of the most influential people in the world from the perspective of multiple observers, you know, four different people, et cetera, et cetera. And what's interesting is, you know, just to, to get this out of the way, I couldn't find it when, once I saw it. I actually scrolled down and I wasn't actually able to see the quote again. So uh, that, that's very interesting. I, I, I tried several times to find it. So apparently there's some sort of algorithm uh, that actually, you know, either you see it once or you don't, uh, which is very interesting in, in terms of the idea of information um, to the extent that, you know, once, once even if you see something, it's questionable if, you, if you're able to see it again um, or, or it's quite possible that the senator from Montana uh, might have decided that liking something publicly uh, might not have been a good political move or might have uh, created more controversy than what he wanted and unliked it, which might have also explained why I can't see it anymore. But this senator is called uh, from Montana is, and I just did some research on him. There we go. And it turns out that, yes, I mean, he used to be a representative for, this is uh, Steve Daines. And, and the reason I, I don't follow that many people on Twitter, I follow this person because he, he had quite a few interesting things to say. And I'm always interested in this, especially in viewpoints that are not um, like my own. Uh, and especially when they are given or, or written in a way that, that provides context and background, especially personal background. And I think one of the things that people worldwide um, are studying now is, you know, why is America falling apart? And it, it, it seems quite clear that America is falling apart. And this is from 2014, by the way. Um, and again, I'm, we're now in 2018, and this, it doesn't seem like much has, has changed. But you can see that if you want to teach a Bible, which says the world is, was created in, in a, a number of days, um, you know, it would also make sense that, you know, the creationism should be taught side by side. You know, in other words, why not be truly multi-cultural um, uh, and teach both creationism as well as evolution? And I think that one of the biggest problems in America is that we don't understand that the people who have different viewpoints than, than ourselves are, in many cases, uh, extremely good people. And, and Mr. Danes, or Senator Danes, uh, like I said, has, has vast experience um, in, in politics, and not just in politics, but also in, in, in corporate America. And let me actually see if I can find, show you his Twitter page. I, I just looked him up. There we go. Like I said, I don't follow that, that many people. Um, and so you've got a guy who is by, you know, and, and if you look up, look up his Wikipedia page, you know, he, he was working for Procter and Gamble, a, a large, you know, multinational company. He created multiple jobs, um, for, for, for Americans as well as, you know, uh, possibly for, um, other people worldwide. And, you know, here he is, he's got a photo with, um, you know, Donald Trump. And again, this is probably one of the most successful people um, in the world, not just in, in, the, in the U.S., in, in the entire world, uh, in terms of business, in terms of politics, and in terms of, of uh, just flat-out um, intelligence. And you can see that, you know, he's not really a controversial person at all. Um, you know, he's just doing what, his account is doing what everyone else does, which is take photos with famous people, um, and, and also just take photos um, and commentary about significant events. He is, quite frankly, the opposite of Donald Trump, uh, you can see how how understated he is, which is what I like about America's Midwest, is that, you know, you've got your opinion, I've got my opinion. We're probably not going to change each other's opinions, but we should at least try to respect where we come from. Now, you might think that, and again, this is really interesting, right? You've got somebody who's, again, completely non-controversial, and this is, you know, not, not exactly typical. Uh, you'll notice a lot of military 
um, posts, which makes sense because in many American states, the military is the employer, is, is a massive employer. Um, and and if this, what's, what I guess might be unusual is that there are, um, may, may, there aren't enough farmers, I guess, that might be you know, in Montana or enough, enough ranchers. And so, but again, you're looking at somebody that is, that is extremely intelligent and you know, somebody that I think any country would, would love to have as a citizen. So we have to ask ourselves, how did this person, you know, end up sort of in a position where, you know, and, and by the way, th let me tell you just how non-controversial this person is. Um, this is a headline, and again, most headlines are, are misleading, um, but, you know, this is where, uh, you know, it's quite interesting. Oh, whoops, this is a, this is a much longer, there we go. Um, and, and you can see almost Mr. that. Mr. President, the majority leader. So apparently Senator this is a, a, a situation where Mitch, when he got dragged into this, in the middle of this, Mitch McConnell and, and Warren had gotten into it, and, you know, hashtags were made and put on t-shirts and so on, and Mitch McConnell got his revenge uh, on, on Senator Warren, whom I, I intensely dislike, um, simply because, you know, when you look at the differences here uh, between, you know, somebody who's, like, Miss Warren on, on non-economic issues uh, is probably more closely aligned with my opinions um, than with Senator Daines. How, however, and when I say non-economic, I'm, I'm sort of, you know, attempting to be a little bit insulting simply because America itself, as a capitalist country, really is a country that's founded on, on, on a certain economic theory. And so if, if I don't agree with you on, on economics, chances are nothing else really matters in the end. Uh, but in this case, you know, you have a, a situation where, you know, there's a rule that says that you actually cannot criticize a senator that's a sitting senator in order to promote decorum. And a lot of people think America has, you know, a, a free, has free speech, but it turns out it's really not true um, in, in all circumstances. And in this case, when Senator Warren attempted to malign a sitting senator, uh, she was told to take her seat. Here in the motives and conduct of our colleague from Alabama, as warned by the chair, Senator Warren, quote, said Senator Sessions has used the awesome power of his office to chill the free exercise of the vote by black citizens. I call the senator to order under the provisions of Rule 19. And again, Rule 19 is, is, about, is about decorum. It's about making sure that, these, that this parliamentary uh, body does not end up you know, in shouting matches and that you can shut somebody down to the extent that they start insulting other people. But you can see that that's, that comment was was actually uh, you know for for political purposes um, it isn't actually that bad. I mean, she's making a legitimate legitimate point or attempting to make a, a legitimate point within context um, within the context of a of a nomination. Mr. President. That's Mr. Daines. You can see he's getting Mr. Advice from. Mr. He's President, I am surprised that the words of Coretta Scott King are suitable for debate. In the United States Senate, I ask leave of the Senate to continue my remarks. I, I honestly, people talk about this uh, about the senator, um, beca this one becoming a uh, presidential candidate, and, and I call her Hillary 2.0. I, I simply cannot imagine um, listening to this voice, and 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 um, it, it just grates on you in the same way that many other politicians do. Um, but in, in her case, it, it's simply a situation where, you know, it, it, it's, she just has a stunning lack of charisma and she makes, tries to make up for it um, with, by being indignant. And that doesn't really work, you know, and, and it doesn't work anywhere. It wouldn't work in, in corporations. It wouldn't work, in, you know, in, in, in schools. Um, not good ones anyway. Uh, but you can see in this case. Is there objection? Objection. It didn't quite work out for her. I appeal the ruling. Object, objection is heard. And again, he's getting, getting out of The advice. senator will take her seat. Now, this became, if you're, now, if you're, you know, my, my real focus on, on, on talking about this, and I've already talked too long, is to show that, you know, it, it, it's, it's a situation where if you saw the previous hashtag, um, where I believe it was persisted or, or something like that, and, and you're, you're well aware of that hashtag, you're probably not aware of this quote, um, you know, about the senator taking um, her seat. And, oh, well, you know what, actually, here we go. I, I, this may have happened actually before or after, we don't know, but you can see that this whole parliamentary process isn't really as intellectual as it makes out. Uh, you can see that it's really a situation where you have tit for tat. 
uh, more often than, than, than not. Um, and I, now, now, what's the point of all this? My, the point of all this is that, you know, you've got to create a situation where uh, we are able to see and respect each other. And I'm in Singapore. And I can see that value in Singapore, which is most, much more multicultural than, than most other countries. Uh, it's got a blend of, of so many different people. Even the Indian population is, is a sort of a minority. It's a Tamil um, minority, which puts them against you know, various governments in Sri Lanka. Um, and it, it's all very, very interesting. Um, a lot of the Chinese are part of, I believe, the Huaren. Let me try to look that one up as well. And again, I apologize for how disjointed all this is. Uh, it's early in the morning. I haven't had any coffee. So, um, oh, that's interesting. Well, this is Google, but because I, I put in a technically a Chinese term, it looks like it's giving me uh, some, some interesting things here. But I've never even heard of this before. And, and one of the things that, that struck me when I first came here, uh, not you know, this time, I've been here before, is apparently they have a tradition of burning, um, not incense, but just burning something in, in, in outside. And so, you know, nearby trash cans and in a controlled fire uh, as a way of showing respect for the deceased or, um, it, or in similar events. And so when I first came here and I, and I saw, you know, right across the street from where I'm staying, um, you know, burning, a fire actually coming out of a, a nearby um, container, I asked, you know, what is this? And, and, and the Singaporean I was with was just like, yeah, yeah, that's just to show, this is quite normal. Um, you know, this is just to show uh, what's, you know, a, a uh, cultural uh, respect for the deceased. And, you know, of course, you know, fires and trash cans in America are associated with riots. But here, you know, when you grow up next to people that are different from you, you gain a sort of knowledge that is that cannot be taught, um, at least not in schools. And this is really the lesson that Singapore, I think, um, can teach many, many other countries is, let me actually get rid of this. It's not very edifying. There we go. Um, and, and so you end up in a position where, you know, despite, let's say, if you are in a position where somebody wanted to say or, or mislead you and say that, you know, these people, these are burning uh, something and, and it's polluting the air, and it's, it's causing, it's going to cause you, you know, a higher rate of, of lung cancer of some sort. And then you can only, you can only imagine, imagine in America, if this were a minority, a, a minority group doing this, that, they, that it, there would be just a massive amount of outrage. You know, it could be a, a great amount of outrage uh, by, you know, who knows? Uh, we don't know if, if these days, we don't know if that outrage will be um, pursued by, you know, state actors uh, by private actors, by NGOs, we, we really don't know, by politically motivated groups, um, and so on. So, but in Singapore, that's not even a question simply because people grow up around each other and advance this idea that we, that, you know, we may be different but, and, and we may behave differently, but we're all Singaporeans. And so when you look at Mr. Danes or Senator Danes's comments about creationism, which are really, you know, it's not that he, he may very well believe it, uh, but again, it's, it's the idea that, that, you know, this idea that, that is in a book that I believe in um, is not being given or, or is being given short shrift, uh, you know, when compared to a lot of other uh, ideas that may, in my head, in my mind, be equivalent. And you can see where he comes from, or at least I can. The difference is, is in Singapore, it really is completely different because the government will shut down ideas that are you know, sort of, and, I, and this is a fantastic book, by the way, if you ever want to read uh, about Singapore, this is probably the one book that I would recommend. And so one of, one of the points that um, this, this professor of, of NUS and former um, HGB official talks about is he talks about the fact that you know, you, you've got a situation where the government can shut down any attempts by private groups uh, to be divisive. And, you know, in other words, we're all Singaporeans, and so if you try to teach something in school that goes against somebody else's beliefs, we have to shut it down because, you know, it may offend somebody, and that works in all, and vice versa. If the other group uh, wants, to, wants to say something in schools that is, that is going to violate, and then we're going to shut down that, that method of speech as well. And surprisingly for, again, a country that claims to have, you know, free speech, and as we just saw, that's not really the case, uh, not in all circumstances. What's surprising is that it goes against this Western idea, Western idea that the freedom of speech is, is something that is above all, um, a, a, you know, above all a, a kind of a value 
that should be upheld in all circumstances. And again, even America does not believe that. Um, and, and even America has time, place, and manner restrictions. Uh, it's just not enforced as rigorously or as narrowly as a country like Singapore. And what strikes me is that you know when somebody like you know, Senator Danes, uh, somebody I respect a great deal, talks about teaching the Bible in schools and why isn't it taught in schools, the reason he's able to say that is because, and not see the conflict between other groups, is because Montana is a very homogenous state. And unlike Singapore, where the automatic idea with, by the government is, you know, hey, you know, what, what's going on here? Um, you know, why are we teaching something that's going to divide the country and make other people, especially minorities, feel as if, you know, they're not in a position where they are 100% Singaporean? Uh, in this case, you'll you'll see that that Singaporean attitude is directly linked to be, literally being able to reach out and touch your neighbor, who, based on quota systems, um, will have at least stay about a seven percent um, Indian population or a seven no seven percent other population, which is Eurasian uh, generally, and also a thirteen to eighteen percent Malay population, depending on what year you're looking at. So, in other words, the country has specifically tried to avoid the ghetto problem that America has which tends to be not only based on poverty, but based on race, which is another reason why America is having so many problems, because they're conflating poverty and economic opportunities with race, which is perfectly understandable given America's history. Um, and what's interesting is in this case, by the way, it's, it's, when, when I look up data, I always try to find a .org or a .gov. It's not necessarily going to be as, as automatically better, um, but it does give you a chance of getting better information. So. Um, I'm just trying to look here. So, so of course, Montana is 89% um, white. Uh, looks like it's got... Uh, oh, okay, that's interesting. The 6% is Native American, and they are typically on reservations, uh, on land of their own that was given back to them. So it's quite possible that if you are in Montana, um, you probably have above a 95% you know, chance of, of, of only seeing people that look like you and then have similar beliefs to you. Um, and so you can see that a lot of the senator's belief systems comes from the exact same intent as Singapore, where what he's saying is, why don't we just get all, all get on the same page, um, and once we were on the same page, and you know, we can be assured of moving together uh, forward as a country, and then focusing on on you know things we can fix, like perhaps you know public transportation, or perhaps you know although that's probably not going to fly in Montana. Um, uh, and it's just, just um, um, underpopulated for the size, as well as you know, um, as well as having a lot of federal land that um, that can be used for uh, farming purposes. Now, what's interesting again is, is how humanity seems to not to be able to overcome his or its own upbringing, because as I said before, this was probably one of the greatest human beings to you know. To ever live in terms of opportunities, and yet he's also somebody because of his upbringing, because of the fact that he cannot reach out and touch his neighbor who might be different from him. You know, because he cannot do that, he does not have the same level of of the of a same attitude towards social cohesion as in Singapore, which is smaller than the size of a state. I believe it is smaller than the size of Montana, um, and so only one one out of fifty states in the U, in the U.S. And so you have this issue where people are trying to think about America. They're saying. What's going on with this country? Well, what's going on with this country is not only this tit for tat, um, you know, issue in, in Congress or Parliament, um, you know, but it's also you know this idea that you've got people all over the country unable to, literally unable to uh, empathize with each other's viewpoints because they lack the ability to actually sit down and have a conversation and see things from each other's viewpoints. And the reason for that is, if you've lived your life in one way for 50 years, you're not going to, you're most likely not going to be able to see the same thing similarly uh, as someone else who's lived next to a Hindu or a Baha'i or a Muslim and so on. And, 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 and we can all understand that had somebody grown up among different people with different religious books, they would have never, they would never actually try to expound the idea that only one of these books ought to be taught in schools. They would have one, either one of two logical uh, attitudes, which is all of them are taught um, or none of them at all. And that's surprisingly similar to Singapore's viewpoint regarding social cohesion. But in America, Montana, I've never been to Montana. I've lived in, in America for most of my life um, and I've never been there. And so you can see very quickly that 
you know, how do you bring together a country that is geographically distant and difficult to get to? Uh, and not only that, but how do you get there when the entire economic system is really premised on staying in one place, getting an, an education in one place, and, you know, for at least 20 years minimum, um, and most likely 25 and, or 21 uh, years, and then, you know, being hostage to the demographics that you happen to be born into. How does that work? When the world is becoming more and more globalized, um, how does that work? How do we get somebody like Mr. Danes to see that, you know, trying to expound this idea um, of, and, and even doing something like liking uh, these kind of comments on Facebook, uh, sorry, on Twitter, how do we get these, these politicians to understand that this may be perfectly legitimate in your state, but it's only legitimate in your state simply because of the lack of, or the, the lack of diversity? And not only that, but the, but the way that somebody was, up, was, was brought up. And a lot of that is, again, in circumstances that are beyond our control, right? I, I couldn't have chosen to be raised in a city that w with, which was probably more diverse than most American cities, and yet pales in comparison to, to the diversity in Singapore that is, again, just another fact of life. And because the multicultural culturalism in Singapore is simply another fact of life, the people here have a completely different system um, that really tr avoids a lot of the, the culture wars uh, of, that, that take place and that are now taking place in America. Now, before you, you jump on, on Steve Daines, you have to remember that he also supported the, the Muslim ban, which was again supported by the United States Supreme Court. People with very different you know, um, upbringings than himself. Although when you look at it, the justices, uh, the four of them out of the five who voted for the, the, the ban on travel, or rather I should say, uh, total uh, executive discretion in determining uh, who may come into, into this country, um, you know, which, within, which in this case is I believe five out of uh, seven countries that are on a banned list or restrictive list, uh, would in fact be Muslim except for uh, Venezuela and North Korea that were already on a list prior to this administration. Uh, and of course, just to be fair, I want to mention that the, the list and the restrictions under Trump also include um, a student, a narrow student um, and other visa waiver opportunities that, as Sotomayor pointed out, uh, aren't always you know, necessarily um, enacted in, in, in practice. So again, we see that this gentleman is very similar to the, the has in, in many cases, the question really is philosophical. Are all of our viewpoints based on our upbringing? Because you can see this man has a very similar viewpoint as the, f the five Supreme Court justices that voted in favor of, of executive um, discretion, total executive discretion, uh, which is where, why Sotomayor has mentioned Korematsu, a similar situation where the, the, the Supreme Court um, provided unquestioning, um, unquestioning allegiance to uh, the facts as stated by the prosecutor for the government or the, uh, the government itself and the lawyer and the facts that were submitted to them. So uh, overall, I think one, one of the things that makes me humble anyway, uh, as I continue to, to travel, is the idea that all of us have at least a certain percent of, percentage of our opinions that are contingent on randomness, um, on luck, on many other things that we don't have control over. And that's another reason why uh, the Supreme Court voted the way it did. All of the minorities, um, except for one, uh, voted against the Trump um, immigration restrictions um, as set forth in the executive order. Uh, the only one that did not, that voted in, in conjunction with the other uh, four native-born Caucasians, all of them were Christian, uh, went to a Christian private school from, from a very young age. Um, not only that, but also went to a college that was a, a religious uh, white, primarily a religiously white college as well. Um, we 